is it? This is my house. My house, I tell you. You're not having it. Round, round, baby, round, round, spin it out on me. I don't need no man. Get my kicks for free. Morning. Da. Morning, fairy cake. Pardon? Talk more. Oh. Oh, not that one. That one is for Michelle. OK. Thanks. So, how are you? Oh, you know, a bit stressed. So much paperwork at the moment. It's just that time of year when it rains down and you like, um... Rain? Yes, that's right. It rains down on you like rain. Oh, well, without rain, we wouldn't have a raper. Hmm. Oh, morning, Michelle. Fairy cake. Why well, has that one got a star on it? Oh, that's a gold star for you, for being such a good friend and making me feel so welcome at the meal. Oh, <laughs> well, I need this. We've got 200 students coming today. 200? Mm. Yeah, about that. The marine biology department. They all need injections because they're going on some scuba diving trip in the Maldives. What are they looking for? I don't know. New ways of spending taxpayers' money. How long does it take to get a suntan? Why does water make you wet? <laughs> Morning, peasants. Oh, Simon, we all know you're gay. There's no need to advertise it with your choice of cake. What, Mum? <laughs> uh, oh, no. I'd rather live. <laughs> So when are we going to have the most annoying patient of the year award? You know, like the Oscars, only ten times longer. Yeah, who would you nominate? But I already know who the winner is. Mrs Langley. I'm on home visits this morning. The woman moves so slowly, I really should telephone her now and get her to start moving towards the door. It's not her fault she's got mobility problems. The woman is a black hole, Simon. She sucks the life force out of everybody. Oh, come on, she can't be that bad. There's a good side to everybody, surely? The nurse. Doctor. Dr. Carmichael. Well, come in. But don't expect a cup of tea. I'm a pensioner. That's all right. I had one three days ago. Well, get a move on. They don't pay you to stand there talking. We today, Mrs. Langley. God, I don't know how you are, but I feel like death. Ten years ago, if I'd felt like this, I'd say I wasn't feeling well. Now I feel like this all the time. That's a shame. Well, what are you going to do about it? I want some painkillers. You're already on the maximum dosage, Mrs. Langley. If I give you any more, it could really damage your kidneys or liver. <coughs> if I was an asylum seeker, you'd give me some. <laughs> Oh, don't say you wouldn't, because I've seen. I've seen how they jump queues in hospitals. It's nothing like that. <coughs> what is it? It's, it's this dust. Your home help really should get her act together. <coughs> I got rid of her. She was black. Of course. Look, if you won't give me something for the pain, can't I at least have some sleeping tablets? I can't get a wink of sleep, thanks to those people. What people? The people at the top of the stairs. You're so lucky going to the Maldives, all that beautiful sand. I mean, I know that you're going there to work. You're right. Now, this is tetanus. Yes, I don't know what I'm doing. OK, just checking. Now, you're just going to feel a small prick. There you go. Now, at least if you get bitten by a shark, you know you're not going to get tetanus. All done. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Have fun. Hope you don't get sunstroke. <sighs> Hold on a minute. What? Can we just rewind? What was it you were saying about the people at the top of the stairs? All them. 
I don't like to think about them. They make so much noise all through the night, traipsing up and down. What? Do you have lodgers? I don't know who they are. They just appeared. I don't know how they got in. What do they look like? Well, I don't know, do I? I can't get up the stairs anymore. Could it be a relative? A neighbour? Someone who has a key? My husband's dead. And my son died 30 years ago. No. They're burglars, squatters. Illegal immigrants. OK, well, why don't I go upstairs and invite them down for a nice cup of tea? No, a nice cup of tap water. You think I'm making this up? I didn't say that. Have you told the police? A policeman came round. He looked about ten years old and he had an earring. And he said I should keep a diary. So you'll have something to read when I've been murdered in my bed. OK, OK, I'll go and take a look. Well, I don't think you'll see anyone. They mostly come out at night time. When I'm all alone. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Is anyone home? Do you think there's anybody up there? I don't know. The weird thing is, downstairs was a tip, but upstairs was immaculate. Almost as if someone was looking after the place. Maybe it's squirrels. They're an absolute nightmare if they get inside your house. <laughs> yeah, right. Squirrels dusting down the furniture with their fluffy little tails. I don't know. Maybe someone's playing a trick on her. I mean, she's a racist old bat. Right, I'm off to lunch. Can I come? Uh, no, I'm seeing someone. No, I only came there to get away from Cherry. She didn't hurt him. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, OK. Michelle's been a bit... Ooh, and she's been a bit... Uh. Oh, well, that's a little bit... Oh. <laughs> so... Somebody tells me that you're having a mad, passionate affair with Lily. Oh, that. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> Daniel says that Heston was so angry he had a big purple vein on the front of his face. Superficial temporal vein. Frontal branch. Heston's got quite a large one. Never mind the Latin. He was sure that you and Lily were up to something. Do you know what? Sometimes I think it'd be a lot easier if I was just a big, screaming queen. Yeah. Tell me about it. Lily! Wonderful news. I've booked us a table at Les Belles Amies tomorrow night. Poulo Po, so perfect, it proves the existence of the Almighty and Moul Marinier, so magnificent, you may wish to marry them. Sorry, Heston, I can't do tomorrow. She's got a date. What? With Del Winton. <laughs> it was an easy mistake to make. You can't tell these days. Can't we go tonight? Now I have to give a talk at the uh, Women's Institute on hay fever. If I can be heard amongst all the sniffling and the sucking of boiled sweets. Well, tomorrow's not a good day for me. Yes. You never seem to make Thursdays. Always sneaking off somewhere. Very mysterious. And that's our cue to sneak off as well. So what do you do? Jiu-jitsu? Jet skiing? Jam making? Heston, it's none of your business what I do. I'm entitled to some space. A space is good, you know, Final Frontier and all that, but uh, couldn't we explore this corner of the universe together? No, Heston, I'm sorry. Sometimes you have to boldly go it alone. Another time. <sighs> like Marlene Dietrich And you dance like Zizi Jaume your clothes are all made by Balmain 
And there's diamonds and pearls in your yeah. hair. Yes, yeah. No, absolutely. It's going to be great. Sure. Off the boulevard, <laughs> Saint-Michel. <laughs> Where you keep your Rolling Stones records. Any friend of Sasha Dispel, yes, you do. But where do you go to, my lovely? When you're alone in your bed, tell me the thoughts that surround you. I want to look inside your head. Yes, I do. What do you want? to punish me. Will you please just tell me what I've done? longer I'm gonna be stuck here for only one more to go and also a bunch of students can go scuba diving off some tropical island I know I'll only treat him if he promises to smuggle me over there in his suitcase I just can go okay if you'd um, like to take a seat yeah. this is mr. Wright yeah, I bet you say that to all the girls. Um, I've just had a call for you. Yeah? Mrs Langley, she's had a fall and she can't get up. What's that got to do with me? Um, she was hoping you could go around. Uh, no, she needs an ambulance. She said she couldn't tell anybody else, but that you'd understand. She clearly doesn't know me very well. She said it's to do with the people at the top of the stairs. Really? Hmm. Okay. Okay, so if you can just roll back your sleeve. Yeah. Well, you've got to have lightly. She usually gets the guys to take their shirts off. Huh? I've got a confession to make. Oh, yeah? I'm really scared of the needles. Oh, it's okay. I always feel such a wuss, but I've had a few bad experiences. Oh, and I'm allergic to penicillin. Oh, that's okay. We've got it in your notes. I tell you what, if you get scared, you can always hold my hand. Michelle, if you can just move out of the way a second. Fine. I'll go up your hair then, shall I? Oh, it's you. Thanks for the warm welcome. What happened to you? I was trying to get upstairs and I fell. I can't drop everything just because you've decided to go mountaineering. But it's not my fault. You'll be old too one day. I really hope not. How did you fall? I've already told you. I was going upstairs. I managed to hang onto the banister, but I banged my knee. Did you hit your head at all? No. Right. <laughs> now this leg needs seeing too. Oh! So, hold that against there. And now I need to get some water. Upstairs. Your sink is disgusting. Oh, what are you doing? I live here. 
Not according to the woman downstairs. The woman downstairs is a very selective memory. Who are you? A Nigel. A son. Oh, Michelle, I wonder where you got to. I've only been gone a minute. It's the hepatitis A that we need. Yes, thank you. Oh, dear. Now, don't worry, you're just going to feel a small prick. Oh, oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. No, it was fine, but... What's the matter? I just feel a bit weird. Are you going to be okay? Stay with me and keep breathing deeply. What, what's happening? I don't know. What did you give him? What you asked for with the tetanus, Michelle? I said the hepatitis. Where's the adrenaline? It's what? The adrenaline. An ambulance. Get an ambulance. Okay, Kieran. Now I want I to stay with me and keep breathing you know, deeply. Center. That's it, now you're going to be okay. Patient, my now this is going to help with the breathing shock. and calm things down. Yeah, my name's Nurse Michelle Corrigan. Everything okay? Everything's under control. He suffered an anaphylactic shock, but we've given him adrenaline and the ambulance on its way. Okay. Who are you? Don't you remember me? No. I remember you. Sometimes I still wake up screaming. All right. I need you to hold this against the knee to stop the blood. I should hold it over a mouth and stop the bile. How did you get into my house? With my key. Where did you get that? You gave it to me. Many years ago. Who are you? I'm Nigel. What? Your son, apparently. I haven't got a son. Well, I must be a ghost. My son died 30 years ago. You wish. What is going on? 30 years ago. That's when I told her I was gay. Yes. And it would be so much easier if you had just died. Spiteful old woman. She's still the same. Still the same old bigot. Yes, I have noticed. But if she's such a nightmare, why'd you come back? I don't know. Why do salmon return to their birthplace? I was here on business, and I thought, finally, I could get in touch. But as soon as I turned the key, I heard her shouting at the home help the Meals on Wheels. I ran upstairs. I've been back a few times, but I still can't do it. I, I still can't talk to her. So come on. Deep breath. Stand up straight. Open wide. He has no right to be here. What, to come and see his own mother? I know what it is. He wants the house. And what gay man could resist this? Why did he come? I was much happier pretending he was dead. Yeah, right. You were so happy. But what would you know about it? I do know that he's offering you a second chance. You don't get many of those in life. And why now? After all these years? Someone told me that Dad had died. Well, Graham died too, so now we've got something in common. OK. Give me a hand taking your mother into the living room. She'll be much more comfortable there. Right. Oh. 
What do you want? I want to make things better. Why? Because you're still my mum. Mrs Langley, not everyone in the world is trying to rob you. There are actually some people that want to help. Michelle. Yeah? I did say hepatitis. Yeah. Yeah, I know you did. Look, Cherry, everything's gonna be okay. Yeah, just let me do all the talking, right? Right, well, they're keeping him in for observation, but it looks like he'll pull through. Oh, thank goodness. I was so worried. If anything had happened... But, on the other hand, there's every chance that he could sue us. Really? Yes, really. So I want to know what happened. Now, I'm going to go and lock up, see you in my office, ten minutes, OK? OK, Julia. Michelle, we must stop meeting like this. You know, I could get to like this job. Yes, the staff are hideous, and yes, the patients are tedious, but just sometimes we get to bring a little joy into their dull little lives. We don't just dish out pills, you know. We bring people together. We take broken Britain, and we mend it. Night, babes. You know, I just wanted you to be normal. I am normal. So, what have you been doing all these years? I'm an antiques dealer. Really? When Graham died, I inherited the firm. Oh, did you? Yes. I've got a flat in Mayfair, one in Milan. And I come to Birmingham three times a year for the fairs and auctions. Oh, well, if you haven't got anywhere to stay, you could always come here. You could have the whole of the upstairs. Really? As long as there are no boys. What? Well, I mean, no funny business. What you do in your own private life is your affair, but not here. Where are you going? I really hoped you'd changed. I mean, the world's moved on, but you haven't. I came here willing to give it a go, but I can see now that you're not even going to try. Sit down. You haven't finished your tea. Oh, and I'm never going to. What? Thirty years ago, you threw me out of home. Well, this time, I'm walking. <sighs> Why did you come all this way? Because I needed you to know how it feels to be lost and lonely with the whole world against you. And then to be rejected by the one person who should show you love. And now you know. Nigel! situation is this. A hypersensitive patient was given the wrong vaccine and with two of you on duty I'd like to know how that happened. Well? A senior practice nurse I take full responsibility for what happened. It was just a, an awful mix-up. You see, the thing is, Julia, the patient was so nervous. I mean, completely freaking out and panicking and Cherry did a really good job at calming him down. But in all the confusion, she must have picked up the wrong needle. You should have checked. I know, I know, but she's a good nurse. It's just down to inexperience. Cherry? Anything you'd like to say? Uh, um... 
OK, right, well, you both better go home, but I am going to have to speak to the other partners. And I'm sorry, Cherry, but I may well have to suspend you. OK. Keston, you know I'm busy. What can we meet up afterwards? Julia, he's a really difficult patient and she's just got blistered. It, it's not her fault. Do you do curses? Hexes? I want one. Making a potentially fatal mistake is one thing, Cherry. But accusing a colleague of it and then trying to blame her, that's despicable. <laughs> Foul play in the world of football and a whole team of suspects next here on BBC One Scotland, Murder, She Wrote.